Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about this thing here. This is the ZMO VTOL Pro from OMP Hobby. Now I looked at the original one a while back and it had a flight controller that wasn't accessible so it was pretty limited in what you could do with it. However this new version has a flight controller that you can plug into a PC, run something like Mission Planner, get into Ardu Pilot 4.3, I think it's Ardu Plane 4.3 on here, and play around some of the settings. That also gives us the ability to plug in lots of different radio types and configure it for lots of different FPV types too and that's what I'm going to do in this video because the one I have has been supplied without FPV equipment and without radio equipment. Now all of the information that you need is kind of in the latest manuals from OMP Hobby so big thumbs up to OMP Hobby for adding that detail in. So rather than you have to kind of figure it out which I think lots of pilots were doing in the early days with the first version of the manual that I saw this later version now has all of the detail, but I'm going to go through it. So if, for example, you want to attach a simple S-Bus receiver, or you want to attach a receiver via CRSF, or if you want to use analog FPV on one of the digital HD FPV systems like Walk Snail, or something like the DJI system, or if you want to control it via something like Mavlink, via one of the more advanced controllers that have like a Q ground control on it with a mission planner light, so you can do things like make it fly to specific points by clicking on the screen, you can kind of do all of that, which is one of the cool things about this. Now I'll put time codes down below, so if you want to jump to a specific part, go and have a look. But I'd absolutely, if you're going to be getting one of these, recommend download the manual and having a look. Lots of great information in there, not only about how you set up things like the radio and the channel order, but I'll go through that in a moment, but also how things are set up and what the process is at the field to do the transitions to and from forward flight and hovering. Now we need to go into Mission Planner first of all and just check a few things and I'll show you where these things live. So if you do want to tweak them when you get yours, you can, but we'll have a look at the default settings. Word of advice, on the USB cable there is an XT30 connector on the side of it. You do need to plug in a 3 or 4S battery into that XT30 connector to power the system. Otherwise, if you try and just plug it in via a USB cable, the flight controller will just continually reboot and you won't be able to talk to it. I wish they'd have included a little adapter in the box, which would take you from the flight battery that you're going to have with you anyway, onto the XC30 connector. I've made one here, but hopefully OMP Hobby will watch in this and maybe add a cable like that in future, because being able to access the flight controller and change things is kind of one of the basic things. And having an XT30 connector on it means that you can't use the flight battery that you get with the model to do that. Now, whenever you change a radio system on something like this, you are going to have to go through the radio calibration process. That is in the kind of the mandatory setup pieces. They have reversed the channel for the pitch or the elevator control, so you don't have to do that on the radio. And that's great for things like the DJI controllers, where doing that kind of stuff is a bit of a painful process. Other things to note is here in Mission Planner, there's also list of what all of the other channels do. Channels 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 with cruise, return to launch, auto, manual and acro. So this is assigning those extra pieces if you really want to. And the other thing that is in here is if you go into the modes tab, here are the three modes. So there's Q stabilize in two positions, Q loiter in two positions, and fly by wire A. And by setting up your mode switch as a three position switch, you're going to switch between Q loiter, Q stabilize, and fly by wire A when you're at the field. So knowing where all of that stuff is, that means then the setup looks like this. Channel one on your radio, if you're setting up your own radio to connect to this thing, needs to be aileron, then elevator, throttle and rudder for the first four controls. Channel five is set as your mode channel. You can set that on a six position switch if you wanted to then have more modes on that, or you can set it as a three position switch, which is kind of what it's designed for initially. Then the other channels, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, are what we've just looked at in the mission planner screen. This is what they're defined as. So by sending channel six high, you're going to turn on the cruise function. By clicking channel seven high, you're going to turn on return to launch. However, you can absolutely change these to be whatever you want. 
And in fact, I think it's important to note that if you are coming into this and you don't want all those extra functions, you can kind of disable them or set them to be whatever you wanted. You could change one of those extra channels to be the arming switch if you really want it to be. But actually, you can get away with just having the first five channels as aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder, which is the default um, order in RD Pilot, although you can change those around if you really have to. I would just set them up that way. It's easier. And your mode channel. If you have those five things set up on your radio, you're kind of set because the arming is done via the sticks. Now, there are a couple of settings in the model it's worthwhile talking about while I was looking um, in the stuff for the mission planner setup. First is that if you fly below about 15 meters, it'll activate the multi-rotor mode. So it will kind of automatically transition. So if you fly too low, be aware of this. If you like to skim the ground, that is a setting that might catch you out. The other cool thing is that if you fly below about 12 meters a second, which used to be, I think, one of the default speeds for the first version, Q Assist will turn on. And what that means is that as you are slowing down and you're starting to get the point where the aircraft is going to stall, the aircraft will automatically start to enable all of the VTOL pieces so that as the wings stall, it won't fall out of the air. That, again, does require the airspeed sensor to be absolutely perfect and working gorgeously so we'll see about maybe that needs calibrating we're in the field but that's also something to be aware of if you're flying too slow you might find that q assist kicks in if with the airspeed sensor in the default position mounted dorsally at the rear you're kind of pulling up or climbing and q assist keeps coming on it's probably because the pitot tube is reading the airspeed as below that 12 meters a second and q assist is kicking in It'll also try and rescue the model if it detects uh, excessive angles by turning on multi-rotor mode and stabilizing. So hopefully that means that if you do get into a bit of a pickle and you do somehow manage to get it into some kind of stall where it's falling out the air and rolling over, then hopefully the flight controller will have enough height to be able to turn it into multi-rotor mode, catch it and hold it into the air. And the last thing is, if it goes below a specific voltage, 3.7 volts a cell, then it will automatically initiate a return to home, which is great because that means that you won't lose your model. Again, 3.7 volts might not be enough if you have flown several miles away. Um, it's got to get back and then it'll transition and land. And transitioning and landing and pulling a lot more current via the VTOL part of a landing, uh, you don't want your battery completely flat. So just be aware of those couple of things. That is the kind of stuff that's set in there by default. Uh, we'll probably test some of that stuff when we do the main. So let's get into how you set up the things like the radios. So one of the easiest connections that you can do is good old S-Bus. And there are three pins here on the lower left-hand side marked as S-Bus and clearly marked as ground 5 volts and signal. And you can just plug your S-Bus receiver into these and it'll be powered and work exactly as you would expect. This is how it comes set up all out the box. The only thing you could potentially do is the serial 2 and serial 4 interfaces, which are kind of halfway up the flight controller are kind of spare for other connections so you could potentially use one of the transmit pins on there to do something like setup smart port if you wanted telemetry back for something like a free sky awst xatar or something like that so there are other options but just plugging in your regular servo cable into those three pins in the bottom left hand corner is kind of going to get you set and then you just have to do your radio calibration Next connection is good old CRSF, the protocol that was created as part of the Crossfire system. Now, by using CRSF, it does allow you to use things like Crossfire, Tracer, and also Express LRS, but we'll get back to Express LRS in a moment. You need to connect the cable that comes in the kit. There is one cable supplied with the kit that plugs into either serial four or serial two that gives you the four wires for the ground, five volts, the transmit and receive pins. And you've got to wire those up to your receiver, your Crossfire Nano or whatever it is. And again, as usual, make sure that the receive pin on one end is connected to the transmit pin on the other. And in the CLI, you're going to have to set the Serial 4 protocol to 23, Serial 4 options to 0, and the RSSI type to 3. The only tricky part about this is, of course, with the default channel order as it supplied from the factory, channel 5 is used for modes, and at Express LRS land, channel 5, particularly at the moment, has to be used for the arming switch. And by sending channel 5 high, that's when the Express LRS system turns on all the goodies. 
So if you are using the Express LRS system with the OMP Hobby ZMO VTOL Pro, I would absolutely go into the user params and change one of those to be the mode channel. And that way it's going to be allow you to use channel five for arming. I set it up for switch arming and use channel six for your modes and then change everything around. As it's supplied, it won't work very well with Express LRS. With Crossfire and things like Tracer, it'll be absolutely fine. Next connection then is for Mavlink. Mavlink, I would connect it up to Serial 2. This is particularly handy for those who want to have some kind of telemetry radio down to a ground station. This is the great place to plug it in. Uh, in the CLI, Serial 2 protocol set that for 2. Serial 2 board is 57 because these kind of serial stuff for telemetry run off 57600. Serial 2 options for zero, very useful for Mavlink RC control and for some of those more advanced, sophisticated uh, bits and pieces in terms of radios and also ground stations too. Next one then is the way that I'm going to do it. You do get a cable in the kit that plugs into this port here up at the top. This is also where you can connect in your analog VTX as well. The cable that's supplied in the kit is easily long enough to go into the back of a full size air unit, which is what I have done here. That then sends all of the HD stuff out of this port and it also then has the SBUS signals from the DJI bits into the flight controller. So you can just use the existing cable, you don't have to make up or crimp or solder or anything. It's really simple if you do it with the DJI system as I'm showing here. In the CLI you need to set the Serial 1 protocol for 33, Serial board for 115 which will give you full speed, Serial 1 options to 0 and the OSD type to 1 and then you should be good. So for analog controls, I already mentioned, that's going to plug into the Serial 1, which is the same place as we've just plugged in the Walksnail or the HD system using the SA and SIT pin, see the wiring. For smart audio, you're going to set it for Serial 1 protocol 37, Serial 1 board is 4, Serial 1 options are 6. For IRC Tramp, if you're using one of those VTXs, it's going to be 44, 4 and 5. So that is how you do it. Again, really nice thing is they have screen printed on the case exactly which pin is which, so you can just follow along. And then finally, if you are going to using the HD FPV V2 or the walk snail system, a couple of little changes. Again, you're going to plug those into that port. However, in the CLI, you're going to make a couple of little changes. Uh, I just follow along with what is in the manual. So hopefully for those of you that I think can get in one of these, that is interesting. There is now far more options in terms of the radio system and the FPV system that you want to use from simple SBUS radios right the way up to very complicated Mavlink control, either basic analog FPV up to HD FPV with the DJI or the walk snail system or others. Just one quick word of warning for those of you that like to customize your on-screen display. Sadly, with the implementation of RD Pilot that's on this model as it stands, going into the OSD tab emission planner gives you a completely blank screen. So unfortunately, you can't drag and drop the elements around as I've shown in lots of other videos with this particular model. What I've done here is I have gone and connected to a spare PixHawk that I had here and configured the on-screen display to the way I like it and then uploaded the parameters onto this OMP Hobby ZMO VTOL Pro. This isn't ideal. I have fed it back to OMP Hobby and hopefully they will improve this in the future. This isn't the only thing that you can't access easily from Mission Planner even though the flight controller is using RD Pilot. So when I come across those things, I'll mention it in the videos. As I've already mentioned, I've wired mine up here for the DJI system. So I have my air unit here at the front. Installing it is very simple and straightforward. There are two little screws at the back here, which holds on a bracket. You just undo those and remove the bracket. The air unit just slides into this little holder and then you do those two screws down. It's in place. In terms of installing the camera, it's a piece of cake because the camera recess is already lined with foam and you just push it into place. You don't even have to do up any screws to hold the camera and the cable that's supplied in the kit you just clip it into the serial one interface clip it into the dji system and set it up as you would expect so join me in future videos where now i've got this system all together i can finally go out and we can give it a maiden flight
Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.